Hey there, Denise. Great job. You're writing more essays. Good work. Let's get right into your corrections so that we can see how you did this time. Okay. Should humans adapt to technology or should technology adapt to us? Is technology making us intellectually weaker or more intelligent? So let's see what you had to say. In today's modern society, technology is used in almost every aspect of our lives. Therefore, I believe that technology should be created to adapt to us. Furthermore, due to technological advancements, it can be said that we are becoming intellectually weaker. We, are for, we will further investigate this topic and support our ideas with examples. Okay, I really like it. It's lovely. The only thing I'm not really a huge fan of is this we. Um, because, well, you're not a we, you're an I. So really it should just be, um, you know, what you could do that would solve this problem and you wouldn't have to deal with it at all is you could use a passive voice. So you could say instead, this topic will be further investigated and supported with ideas and examples. Um, or, you know, something like that. But using passive voice would help you avoid this whole personal pronoun thing. Okay? All right, so let's move on. On the one hand is usually how we say this expression. Uh, the advancement of modern technology, such as phones, computers, and smartwatches, have been created to make our lives easier. This is accomplished with the help of programs which have been incorporated into these systems, plural here, S. A study in the UK shows that smart gadgets learn and adapt to, well, their users. Why? Because it's gadgets, plural. This is such a common problem that everyone has. So make sure you remember that you've used a plural here. It should be to their users by 65%. Now, here what you could have done is you could have changed the grammar around, made it a little more advanced, but more importantly, a little more accurate. So, let's try it again. A study in the UK shows that smart gadgets learn and adapt to their users by 65%, which is done by the devices collecting various amounts of information and learning from it simultaneously. As a result, adapting to the person who is using the gadget. Therefore, it can be said that modern technology has been developed to adapt to the numerous needs and wants of the person as an end user. All right, lovely. On the other hand, it can be said that modern technology does make us intellectually weak. This is accomplished by programs such as autocorrect and cell phones and even spelling and grammar checks on computers. That's a really strong example. And I think out of all the times that I've read this, this is the first time that anyone has mentioned this. Um, it's a very good point. Okay, let's see how you develop it. Uh, these programs learn and generate various simulations with the help of algorithms. I think you spelled algorithm. I think you're missing a letter here. I think there's a Y somewhere in algorithm, but I'll have to double check. Okay. Um, these programs learn and generate various simulations with the help of algorithms in order to come up with gestures and even starts. I don't know what you mean by starts. To correct our language or communicating with others. A study in Spain show that the generation of the 21st century has become so used, careful the grammar here, used with a D, to their technology performing very small tasks such as autocorrect and spell check that they have become 50%, 55% intellectually, intellectually weaker compared to previous generations. Okay, um, I like everything so far that I've read. However, this is... Remember, I mean, okay, obviously you're going to be coming up with different examples to support your argument and, you know, these are things that you are basically fabricating, but do try to make sure that what you're, um, the support you're giving is believable. I mean, you've got this thing here, 55% intellectually weaker. Okay, well, I mean, on what? Like on a stand, like based on what? On a standardized test? Um... I mean, it's, you know, it, it sounds really specific, but it's actually really vague. I mean, how do you calculate intellectual prowess, essentially? I don't know if you know what I'm trying to say here, but be careful. I mean, using examples like this is great, but make sure that they are plausible examples. Okay? All right. Uh, as a result, the art of penmanship, along with other language skills, uh, is disappearing and making us the modern-day people intellectual weaker intellectually overall i do believe that the advancements of technology in today's world have why because its advancements have been created to adapt to our ways of life and as such have made us why again advancements this is such a common problem all right make sure these all fit so 
should be have made a substantial to the weaker and dependent. All right, it's a nice job. I liked it. I mean, obviously there were some little mistakes, but on the whole, it was a good essay. Okay, so let's see. This is your cover letter. Let's see. Wow, long. What happened here? Really long. Remember, um, 150 words is the minimum. You should probably, you don't really need to write more than 200. I think you can write 200 words and be in a safe area, but let's see what you have to say here. I would like to advertise, uh, no, I would like to apply for the advertised post of project manager listed on the website of Al Shaya Job Openings. I'm currently employed with LSN, where I'm recognized for my management skills and ability to coordinate a team of 70 technicians through a systematic environmental database, which includes the following. What do you mean the following? Shouldn't you have a, a, a colon here? Which includes the following Oracle, Unify, and IBS, full stop. The ability to solve disputes, misunderstandings between clients. Oh, why? Why is this happening? You've got a capital here, and this is not a full sentence. So this is a little confusing. You really need to clean up the, the syntax here. Okay, I was also given the responsibility to calculate problems with the operating systems and try to determine methods to solve issues. Not the issues, but issues in general, because you haven't really mentioned which issues. So it's just general issues. The other responsibilities that I took over were, because it's responsibilities, were making sure that the technicians followed the health and safety regulations, plural, of the company, manage the cash collection, no, collection, by technicians, and hand it over to the accounting department. Um, I would have preferred maybe a different word. The, 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 it becomes a little awkward here. Um don't have really a suggestion that comes to the top of my head without spending much of your precious time, but I'm not really crazy about this. As well as, now here's a problem. Check it out. Look, here you have an ING. So, the, pro the responsibilities I took over was making sure, uh, and then you have a noun. This should be managing cash collection and handing it over to the accounting department as well as preparing. Now it makes sense. So that's what your problem was here. You were really missing some INGs here um, because that's what your first one was. All right. I firmly believe that my knowledge and experience gained at OSN, no comma is necessary here, will add value to this position, ultimately your organization. Don't know why you hit return here, why you hit enter. You shouldn't have. It should have been part of the same paragraph. Okay. I have also worked with the design group as an assistant manager where no comma is necessary here. Okay, where I performed, careful with your typing, very small jobs such as setup of acoustic treatments for home theater systems, plural, cabling, speaker placements, and calibration of fine tuning of sound dynamics. My ability, um, I wouldn't say of DSI, DEI, I can't speak today. My ability in DIY assembly, okay, etc., etc. Now, this is a little confusing because there is no verb. Listen to this sentence as you've written it. My ability uh, of DIY assembly of turntables, da 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 da, da calibrating image of, it, there's no verb. Where's the verb? All right, so you either needed to add this to your previous sentence where you had that list or you needed to find a verb somewhere. Okay, I have gained knowledge and expertise in almost every aspect of the management field. I would appreciate the opportunity. Now, this is something I feel really needs uh, support. I mean, what does that mean in every area? You should have said here, including this, 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 and this, or something. You have to, that's something that really needs some explanation. Maybe, you know, you needed a little less up in this paragraph, but um, when you say something like that, that's rather impressive. You probably should have backed it up somehow. Okay, I would appreciate the opportunity to join an esteemed and reputable organization such as yours. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. This doesn't totally fit here. Here you're talking about your whole past experience, and all of a sudden you're telling them how much you want to work for them. I don't think it belongs here. I would have stopped here, and I would have probably put this like down here. Okay, I believe the combination of work experience along with my bachelor's degree in construction, technology, environmental regulation, compliance, and no comma necessary, will attribute greatly to my ability to perform with the standards, careful, A-R-D-S, that your organization requires. They always require it. They didn't just require it sometime in the past. 
Please have a look at my enclosed resume for detailed information of my work experience and education. Okay, um, this is a little, I mean, it's polite. You're saying have, I mean, you're saying please, but still I would prefer you to be even more polite than, more polite than this. Um, in other words, um, you, um, please consider my resume, my attached resume for your consideration would be more than enough, okay? And then this looking forward to discuss, there's two problems with it. It's not formal enough. I want it to be, I am looking forward to, but then look at this, this has to be discussing, ing. So I am looking forward to discussing uh, the position more in detail in person, okay? And then you've got sincerely. Now, how did you start your letter, dear sir, ma'am? which means that when you start your letter with the name of somebody you don't know, and it's this kind of generic, dear sir, ma'am, ma'am, mad, madam, whatever, you have to close your letter with yours faithfully. It's just a standard convention, but I know that examiners are looking for things like that, so please do write yours faithfully whenever you do not know the name of the person you're writing to, okay? All right, so some nice elements to both of these essays. Um, is there something after this? There shouldn't be. Nope, just a blank page. Okay, so um, a nice attempt. Good job with both of them. I mean, they both have some little things that need to be tweaked, so definitely tweak them. Add the errors to your error correction list, uh, correct the essays, and send them back to us with your next essays. Please try to do this in the next 24 hours or so so that you can really keep on top of all the things you've been learning um, in the course and the video corrections and so forth. All right. So great job. And I can't wait to see, um, your next essays.